everyone and welcome back to my channel so today I'm going to be drawing these gorgeous little flowers that are in my garden I've I'm not sure what they're called but I absolutely love them they're one of my faves so I picked them this morning because I thought I want some fresh flowers to practice and yeah I haven't ever painted these before but I love the color I love lilacs and purple and all of those sort of colors so we're going to start just by getting in the rough shapes so and I'll, I've got the board in the background as you can see and it's got the shadows and things so what I'll do with that is I'll change the color of the background but I'll still try and add those shadows in and we'll see how we go so I'm just going to get see if I can draw in this outline so that's that one I need to have that one back over here more like that bring that one back or I can change the shape as I go I'm just getting the outline just getting the outline where I want it and then I can add the middle details as I go so that's about that shape I'm going to keep the leaves where they are he's got his middle bit there <coughs> so there's a leaf there that comes to about that part of the flower and then there's another leaf that sort of comes around there twists around a little bit so I draw that there like that and that connects the two flowers pretty much and then this one is sort of a bit droopier and I took this angle because I wanted to get some shadows on there it just makes it far more interesting and you find a lot of the photos you get unless you take them yourself they don't have good shadows in them it's really hard to get a picture with contrast from a reference from an on a free reference thing so I do recommend if you can get if you can take your own photos take your own photos it does make a difference so he's got a big long flat bit up there okay so it's sort of rough it's very rough but it's and I'm gonna draw that that leaf coming up here And this, my photo's reversed. I'm not quite sure my photo, why my photo's reversed, but um, I apologise for that. But if you, yep, it's reversed. <laughs> I can't do anything. I don't know how to fix it. So there you go. And these leaves are really unusual. These petals are really unusual because they go, oh, sorry, not petals, leaves. They're the leaves because they have that kind of a structure that goes a bit strange. I'm going to go up here. Okay, and I'm, I might try, will I try and draw the glass? I might not try and draw the glass. I'm going to try and flip my picture. I don't know how to flip my picture. How do I flip my picture? Can I flip it? Hang on. Oh, not that one. Oh, no, don't move it. Whoops. <laughs> okay, maybe I'll leave that. Maybe it'll have to be reversed today. It'll have to stay that way. <laughs> um, okay, so now I can start. I'm going to start on this bottom flower. I'm not going to worry about the glass. I'll just do, there's a bit of a of leaf in the glass there that I'll draw. And it just comes down and around like that. Um, so I'm just going to draw in these petals that come around the middle of the flower. Like that. And they've got yellow stamen in the middle. So I'll just draw that bit in. There's beautiful shadows in this photo, so that is really super duper helpful. I can make my, I can zoom in on my photo as well, just to make it a bit larger, if it'll let me. There we go. Because I've got my iPad next to me. Because these petals have gorgeous detail. They have gorgeous detail in them. <coughs> so I'm, I was sort of excited to try it, because these are my favourite flowers. I adore these flowers. I don't know what they are, but I love them. <laughs> And they grow every year in my garden on this really strange looking bush um, and they're quite happy in the hot climate so that's always a good thing in Australia and they've got this beautiful yellow bit that comes up there that leaf comes around here I, I'm going to do quite a bit of detail in this drawing um, so that's that one that comes around here almost to the edge see I've got that pet that leaf not quite big enough there we go that comes around there 
So I'm just looking at the picture the whole time, and yet the, the one that's on the screen is flipped, it's reversed, so I apologise for that, peeps. I can't, can't fix that just yet, I'll have to fix that for next stream. I've only just figured out how to add photos to my videos. <laughs> so um, I'm still learning. Still learning, very much learning how to do all the things. So, so I'll pop that there. There's another, there's a petal coming up here. Looks like they've got two lots of petals, one within the other. What's that one doing? Is that an extra petal or is that one just... There it is, that's an extra bit. Okay, we're good, we're good. So now that's one petal. There's that petal overlapping this one. And I never used to do a lot of flowers, so this is lots of learning for me and good fun. I've got to make that petal bigger, like that. And come around here. Right. I'm going to erase this. There we go. All right. Come around here. And there's beautiful wrinkles all through that flower. All right. So there's a shadow there. There's all of this detail going on. I've got to get these, the separation of these petals into there. Like that. Come around there. That petal comes around here. And I can see the edge of that petal there. All right, so that's pretty much the drawing. That's the base drawing. I just followed the shapes that I could see and I'm going to go straight in to the flowers. Straight into the flowers. I've got to Google what these are. If anyone knows what these are, feel free to let me know because I've got no idea. I know there's an app you can get on the phone that you can sort of screenshot it and it'll find what it is. Maybe I need to do that. So we're going to find a lovely purpley lilac-y colour. Um, and I actually have one called cobalt violet and I reckon that will be not a bad match look at that that's a beautiful color that's my Sennelia's cobalt violet so what I'm going to do first is a very diluted I'm going to wet the wet the petals wet the petals come around here and drop in that violet and let it flow around like that so I wet the paper first, then I drop in the violet. It's got a little bit of glare on it. I'll have to move those lights a little bit maybe. That's a bit better. And very pale to begin with. Very pale to begin with because I'll build up layers. All right. I'll move on to this petal. And it's not going to be photorealistic because I'm not a photorealist. It'll be suggested, but I'll get it. I will try and do as much, get as much of a likeness as I can. Try to pick up that bit. Now I'll wet my brush again. I'm working with a very small brush too. I'm working with a size four black velvet. So come around here and drop that in under that petal because these back petals are darker so I'll do a couple of layers on these back petals first like that all right okay come down here go back to my cobalt violet that around there take it around the bottom all right and I'm going to wet this petal
Okay. Okay. Sorry, just talking to my daughter. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to pop. Okay, so I'm just adding these flower details. Those little bits was me just talking to my daughter, sorry. <laughs> she asked me a question. And we were talking about what they were up to, what she was up to. So that's pretty much, I'm going to let that dry a little bit and I'm going to go down to this bottom flower. And now, whoops, I'm going to fill in these I'm going to wet these petals and come down and around the outside. I've got to get some more of that cobalt violet. <coughs> Hello, Anjali. My pleasure, Dal. My pleasure. I love, I'm, I'm really enjoying painting live. I'm really enjoying it. So I'm just going to fill in these petals and I'm doing something I'm not necessarily confident with. I haven't done a lot of florals in the past, but I'm pushing myself and trying to do better, trying to do more different things, push my skills. And um, yeah, so I've thought I'd be brave <laughs> and do these gorgeous flowers that I need to find out what they're called. They grow in my garden, but I'm not sure what they're called. <coughs> and while the, t the, see it's, the paper's drying quite fast because we're having a really warm day here, it's already hot and it's only like nine, ten, nine in the morning. Okay. It's already t-shirt and hot weather. All right, come down around the edges of the petals. And I'm going to build this up over a few layers. I mean, the photo's a bit more purple than what I've got. So, but I can always add a little bit more purple into the shadow areas, but I just wanted to start quite pale. Start pale and I can build up. I can always add, hello, Joe. How are you? From a very windy UK. Oh my god, yeah, I saw on the news. You guys have been hit hard. You have had some extreme weather. I think the world's gone a bit crazy weather wise. We've had extreme heat and weird storms and it's been crazy. But yeah, hope you're safe. Hope you're safe. I did see it on the news. Okay. So I'm just going to continue on. Whoops, I've got a bit of a splash on my paper there. And I'm working on hot press paper too. I love the smooth paper. Take that around here. All right. Let that dry for a little bit and I'm going to go back up to these leaves. And I'm just going to go in to begin with, with a bit of sap green. Just a base sap green, no, no mixing, just a base pale colour. Of this sap and I can, because that's dry I can go right up to the edge of that petal there and I can take that all the way around this side fill fill in those petals I can add all the details after because luckily all the details on these are darker details um, so I can use darker greens but for now I'm just going to block in with a pale green which is sap a beautiful watered down sap green so just lots of water in it. Lots of water. Take it up to that pink because that pink's now dry. If that pink wasn't dry, that watercolour would go into that pink and ruin it. So you've got to be careful that your paint's dry because otherwise anything wet will pick up the pigment and take it and make it run all around the place. Okay, so got to be careful that anything you're coming up to the edge of is dry. Yep, all good, good thing we invested in Aussie style fencing. Oh, <laughs> yeah, good sturdy fences, mate. Good sturdy fences. Always do well. All right, so I'm going to pop this leaf in down here. Yeah, our fences are tough, but our roofs blow off. <laughs> We've got tin roofs, and the tin just blows straight off when the, in the massive winds like that. But you guys had 200 kilometre an hour winds. We only get 100k. You guys were really pommeled bad. Okay, so I'm going to let those petals, those leaves dry now, and I'm going to go back to my flowers up the top, and I'm actually going to try. I'm going to mix up another little. I'm going to make a slightly. Try and make a slightly. 
stronger mauvey colour. That's a bit too purpley. Hang on, that's a bit too purpley. But then again, actually, no, it might be all right. I'm going to start to add, oh, I need it a bit more diluted. I can't go too strong too fast. Add a bit more water. Don't get too hard too fast. And then come around here. So I can see that shadow there. So anywhere I can see shadows now, I'm going to start to pop them in. I apologise for the photograph being reversed. I could possibly fix it, but I'm not sure how. <laughs> uh, um, calm down. About half of this petal from about there is shadow. Just a very subtle shadow, so I'll take that. So I'm just working on one part of the flower at a time. And get the shadow, a little bit of shadow around there. At the end, I will add all the um, the line work, like the, the the veins and the petals and the veins in the leaves and things. I'll do that as the last stage. So at the moment, I'm just building up layers. There probably won't be too many because these are quite delicate flowers. I'm going to see if I can flip that photo because that's driving me crazy. Can I flip it? Uh, image, can I flip it? Hang on. Can I flip it? Invert selection. Ooh. Invert's probably not the one, is it? Because invert's upside down. Hang on. Maybe I'm just going to quickly try and flip the photo. No, I won't. I won't because I'll, I'll wreck something. <laughs> sure, sure as anything, I will wreck it. If I touch anything, I shouldn't touch. So I won't. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Off to bed. Stay cool. You too, Dal. Stay safe. Stay safe. And yeah, thank you for popping in. Enjoy your sleep, Dal. Sleep well. All right, so now I'm going to come down here, darken up in that petal. It was lovely to see you for a little, light, little while, Joe. Okay, pop him down there, darken this up. So I can see that he's darker down there. Actually, it comes right up to there. So just very subtle shadows. Pop that in there. Then he's got shadow over this part. I do need to flip that photo. I'm going to try that again. Hang on, just bear with me. So if I go to my photos, uh, if I go here and I go photos, uh, no, that's not going to work. doesn't matter. Okay. Right, so now there's a shadow on this part of this petal. that come around the edge a little bit and there's a bit of shadow there like that and it's darker into there and there's some beautiful pinks in this as well there are some beautiful pinks in this I'm just going to soften that edge a little bit and what I do to soften it is I wet my brush take all the pigment off it wet it and just sort of wiggle around the edges and it just softens those edges so I don't end up with hard lines. Oh, I apologise for that. My Instagram notification happened because I don't know how to turn that off either. <laughs> I'm not very good at technology, can you tell? Okay, so I'm going to pop this shadow up here. I'm having a quick look at my flower. Okay, I think we're looking good. We're looking good. Get that shadow in behind there. And I can drag that out like that all right and there's actually a, there's a shadow down here as well shadow down there so I pop that in like that and I'll drag that up so I'm working quite watery paint onto dry paper I'll let that underlayer dry so now I'm going to come down to this bottom flower I'll let that dry. oh yeah I'll let that dry a bit and I'll work on these center petals but I'll come down to this flower. I'll mix up some more of that shadowy pink. So I'm using a mixture of, what is it, permanent magenta and cobalt violet to make this pink, this purpley shadowy pink. So I'll come down here. Oh, that's a little bit darker. So that's fine. We'll just wet that, wet my brush a bit more. And again, making sure that leaf in the background was dry, which it is. 
because otherwise you can end up with quite a mess and that this pink would roll blow up into that and you don't want that at all so you've got to make sure that anything you're using is dry and that behind what you're doing is dry so I come down and around here that just wet that all over now there's that one's darker right there is darker so do that put that in there that bit there's darker because that petals turned over and right there where it joins onto that next petal is darker um, Then we're going to come around the back of these and I'm going to do that shadow there. Come up and around like that. I'm just going to see if I can flip this photo. Hang on just a second because it's harder for you guys to judge what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my other photos on my other camera thing and I'm going to try and flip it. So, and I'll, then I can put it on the screen and it'll be fine. There we go, that's better. Now, then you'll be able to see. So now I've just got to get it across to my so big you have Oh! Your phone, this trick is gonna blow your mind. Just oh, drag your God. Over any object and boom, it just disappeared. And it wow. Works okay, anything. that's interesting. Photos, <laughs> okay, that can go away. Go away, advert. So Hang on, sorry. Okay. So now I'm just gonna swap the photo hopefully I can do this and that way you will have um, the photo save how do I save it save no oh, okay um, there we go that one and then I'm gonna send it to my email and then I can put it onto my app that I've got here send just bear with me a second, peeps. I promise you it'll only take a second and it's good because it's letting my paint dry anyhow, which is what I need. And I can always re-wet anything I need to. Okay, so that's now arrived in there. So I want to save that, save image, save. Okay, and then I'm going to go up here, see if I can, hang on, display capture. Is that that one? Uh, no image that one so image I want to put a new image in okay so browse <gasps> okay uh, where is it browse that one open done okay there we go now we're facing the right way now we're facing the right way all good look at that I figured it out <laughs> go team Okay, so now I'm looking at this and I've got to darken up this. Come down and around all these bajaggedy bits because the centre of this flower is darker. And under here, there's shadows coming under here. I can leave a little bit of a gap. That comes around there like that. Um, hang on just a second. Okay, having a look. So that's much darker there. Like that. That's got that dark petal there. And then I've got a dark bit coming down here. Alright. It's pretty good. Pretty good. I might work on the shadows around the outside here. And I'm going to do them, I think, probably in a blue. Oh, actually, you know what I do? I'm going to wash around the outside. I'm going to grab a big brush, clean it, make sure it's spotlessly clean. Thank you, Dwayne. How are you? Thank you. I'm just very beginning. I've just figured out how to flip my photograph. So I'm just going to do, I'm going to do a blue background, cobalt blue background. Just very diluted. 
and I'm just going to cut that around the edges of the flowers. I'm not going to fill the whole page because I want to add the shadow but the shadow needs something to sit on. So I'm just going to cut around here so it's very, very watered down paint. Very diluted. Come around this edge. So instead of the grey that's on the photograph, I'm going to use this blue. And just take that right round all of these edges and it's very dry so that paint that the, the paint will only go where there's water. It will not travel where there's not water. So providing the background, the painting itself is dry, the watercolour won't go over it. It won't travel. So you've got to be a bit careful with that. So I'm just going to come down here. I can go closer to the edges in a minute. I'm just going to try and block it in because it's drying out really fast. Oh, thank you. Thank you, mate. Come around here. Fill that in. I don't have to get right into the edges. It's a watercolour. All right, there we go. Just darken that in there a little bit. I could pick up any of that excess water, take the moisture off your brush and just dip the tip of your brush into it and it'll suck up like a mop, which is nice and helpful. <sighs> Grab some more of that cobalt, come into here. I've just got to have enough of that cobalt on the background to put the shadows in. Come around here. And I just used a piece of board as a backdrop, one of my drawing boards as a backdrop to get the contrast with the shadows. In the background, oh, that's way too too strong. So I'll soften that up again, doesn't matter anyway. Like that, cut around the edge. Come up and around like that. Well, not perfect, but awesome. It's working. <laughs> that makes me happy. So I can see that I've got a bit of a line happen there, so I can just go over that carefully. Oh, it's still a little bit damp. Right. I'm not going to worry so much about filling it right into the edges, but what I am going to do now is I'm going to put these shadows in. So I'm going to go a darker blue, maybe an ultramarine. We'll try that as the shadow. We'll see how that works. So I'm going to come the shadows around here. Oops, got that onto the petal a bit. Comes back in, goes up. Cut right around, be a bit careful around that edge. It goes down here and it goes down there. So that's that shadow. And that's just pale. It's not, it's a subtle shadow. Get a bit more ultramarine. And then the shadow comes up under here. Looks like it's a reflection of the leaf. Come around here. And then out there. Come around. Like that. And it comes back in. And it's like that. So I'm just pop those in. Like that, just to suggest the shadows like that, just slightly darker blue. So I can even darken that up some more when I get there, but I, and I probably will, and there's a shadow there. I could probably add some indigo to that, actually. I might even try that, you know. Let's try it. What's the worst thing that can happen? Okay, so just go some real, right into the edge like that with the, with the indigo, while that is still wet, to help to get that contrast that I want. Like that. And just let that do its thing. Let that do its thing. And then same on this one. Just darken up right in close. Like that. Come around there. Come around there. Come right into the edge of the flower. And it's just doing what you feel like doing. It's having fun. No pressure. No pressure at all. It's just a painting. Not the end of the world if it goes wrong and you don't like it at the end. But I don't mind that. I don't mind that. I think it just it's a little bit interesting. I'm just going to soften that edge a little bit. I'm going to wet my brush, take the excess moisture out, and while it's still damp, drag that out a little bit. 
this so it doesn't look so hard. There we go. Drag that edge. You see, and it's on hot pressed paper, and you do tend to get hard lines on hot pressed paper. Hot press just means smooth. So you do tend to get hard lines on hot pressed paper. It does have that habit of doing that, but that's fine. I like it for, you know, usually for wildlife art, I'll use the hot press. <coughs> so now I'm going to work on the centre of my picture. And I'm going to go in with this pale pink to begin again. And just start to fill in these centre petals. Like that. Uh, now there's highlights on these, so I'm going to leave a little bit of the white of the paper just as the highlighty bit. Because otherwise it's a bit samey samey. And we've got to be a bit careful that we don't have it too samey samey because it'll just look flat. But I will build it up like I did the first one. I'll add darker contrasty layers. Alright, come down and around here. Like that. And the centre is yellow, but I'll have to wait until it um, dries to add that in. Uh, that's a light, very light pink. And I'll go a stronger. It's another layer over the top, but a bit stronger. Alright. <coughs> so. I'm going to go in with a bit more of this lilac -y colour. Have I got anywhere? I'm just having a quick look at what colours I've got. I have a quinacridone purple that I might try as well. A bit of quinacridone might work. So we'll try that. There we go, that's a beautiful dark purple. So we're going to go into these shadow areas with that quinacridone and start to build up our contrast. I can do that on these outer petals, like that. <coughs> and then come anywhere that I've put shadow, I'm now starting to darken a little bit. And it's much darker down here. So I'll make that stronger there. That background's dry now, so that purple shouldn't run outside of the picture. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, now let's have a look. Darker down here. Coming around the petal there. And it's all just illusion. Like, you, you glance at it and you, you go, oh, yeah, that looks all right. But then when you look at the detail, you go, hang on a minute, how did they do that? And it really does. It's fascinating. Sometimes you look at things and you see what they want. Like you see the impression of what people want you to look at. But then when you look closer, you're like, hang on a minute, there's really no detail there. That's just lines and smudges and blobs and, and it creates exactly what you want, <coughs> which is good fun. All right. So I'm just going to blend that out a fraction. Now having a quick look, this petal here is darker in there. Oops, I've got to get some more of that quinacridone purple. Get more of that on my palette. And take that around this bit here. I'm going to darken that up. Oops, went on to the bit that I shouldn't have, but it doesn't matter. Okay, got that on there. <coughs> up and around here. Up here. Dark there, and it's yeah, I've got that dark in. It's a little bit of dark up there. All right, so the bottom's darker than the top, <coughs> which is what we want. I think I could probably bring that shadow up a fraction more there. Then into these ones, I can go a slightly be a bit braver. Come into there, come down to there. Do that edge of that one. 
there's just a shadow up that side of that one and then <coughs> into there okay I'll let that dry and then we're just about ready to get into the detaily detaily that's a bit of fun okay so I keep it quite simple I don't go into too much you know fuss because that just makes it a nightmare and takes forever <laughs> so I just try and get what I'm seeing because I'm so used to drawing from nature I do draw a lot from nature and I outside and you've got to draw fast because things change quick so you've got to be fast and that's why I am a very fast painter and drawer because I'm so used to doing everything from in real time in real time um, I can't take days on a piece which is I wish I could but yeah usually two or three hours is max I think the longest one I've ever done took about 12 hours okay so I'm gonna come up here but that was an in the art room one it wasn't an out, outside one okay come down here <coughs> around this edge this flower is darker it does have darker petals and everything so pop that in there <coughs> and come down here this one I haven't quite got the shape right on this bottom one but it doesn't matter it's not the end of the world uh, so I've got that shadow that shadow needs to come around there a bit more and into there cool and then it's a bit more coming out here what have I done there what is that is that just a high I don't know what that is <laughs> doesn't matter <coughs> okay uh, now I can sort of start to get into the liney detail now so I'm going to go my quinacridone almost pure or it is pure actually and I'm going to grab my rigger brush which is a very fine tiny tip and I'm going to draw in start to draw in the little veins on these petals because that'll give it actually I might use the pink might use the pink because it's just like creases but this is very paper like this plant is this flower is super duper duper super delicate and it is very delicate to like very delicate little crepey it's crepe like crepe that's what it looks like it's like crepe <coughs> so if anyone in the chat knows what this is from the photograph that would I'd love to know because I've had it many years in my garden and I don't know what it is <laughs> but I love it it's one of my favorites and I look forward to it flowering every year okay down and around following the directions that's all going come around here so these ones sort of come down and I'm just using the rigger just to pop these lines in and they don't have to be exact they can just be as close to as what you see as possible and everyone sees things differently so what I'm seeing is not necessarily what other people are going to see so everyone sees things differently that's why art's so sub subjective because um, everyone sees things different so come back around here and I have color issues I have trouble with reds and greens and blues and my blues are always way more saturated they should than they should be and stuff like that because I can't and I can't see reds clearly but they're my favorite colors to use <laughs> reds and purples okay so I'm gonna come down here mark that petal in these ones the lines go a slightly different way <coughs> these ones go out because that one's that flowers drooping that way and the direction of your lines will suggest the direction of the way the leaves are falling and the petals are falling and sitting like that okay let's 
such beautiful flowers though. They really are such gorgeous flowers. Come down here. down and around like that and now I can add some darker greens to these leaves so what I'm going to do here I'm going to grab my next size up brush go away from the rigger and I'm going to grab a little bit of olive a little bit of olive green I've actually got some on my palette from yesterday so I'll just pop that onto my top palette up here and I am going to pop that in on the shadow areas on these leaves come around here Come around here. Come around there. Right, so that's the shadow on that leaf. And it is a hard shadow. That is a hard shadow on that leaf. So I'll just take the, the lines up a little bit. <clears throat> now this one, the top of the leaf is in shadow. I've got to get a bit more olive. There we go. The top of the leaf is in shadow. Excuse me. Whoops, get a bit more green, a bit more olive. Come around here. Like that. And then I'll do this, come around here. Okay, so I'm happy with that shadow. There's a leaf underneath and it is almost in complete darkness. So I'll just I'll get a bit of a stronger olive. And I'll drag that, that whole leaf like that. Like that. I might even get even, even more pure olive than that. I've got now while it's still wet, drop a stronger olive in. Because you can barely see the details on that leaf. So I'll take that in and around like that. And I'll drag that all over. Wet clean my brush, wet it. And with a damp brush, I'm just going to let that flow, wet the rest of the leaf and let that green flow. Pick up that bead, that, what they call that a bead, that bottom bit. So I take the moisture out of my brush and just pick that up. And I'm going to let that dry now. Let that bottom leaf dry. And I'm going to go up to this leaf up here. And it's got, it's got a bit of dirt, or like a dirty bud that's sitting in there. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do it as a shadow. So I grab a bit of the olive, that's olive there, yep, a bit of the olive, and I'm just going to take that up the centre of that, go to there, drag that out to the edges, like that, and up the lines of the flower, just to define those a little bit more, and I can do that with these others as well now, just like that. Just helps to define those a little bit, like that. And I could even go a bit of blue in there, which I might do. Go a bit of indigo, touch of indigo right on the darkest edges. Just wet my brush a bit more, just to get that contrast right next to the flower because they are at their darkest darks, are right next to the petals. So I'll just take that up like that. Like that. <coughs> Get a little bit more on there. Go onto this bottom one and really darken up that shadow there while that's still wet. Like that. And just a little dark strip in there. Like that. There we go. I'm happy with that. I might try and darken up these shadows because I think they need to have, I don't know, do they need more contrast? What do we reckon, peeps? Do they need more contrast? I'm not sure. I've got to, I've got to darken up the petals. I've got to get more shadow happening in those. So I'm going to go to my quinacridone purple again. Go to my quinacridone. And I'm going to strengthen these shadows, really give them some punch, because I need to darken up these. 
anywhere that I see shadow, I've got to come around there a little bit, <coughs> like that. Uh, come into here, that's much darker, so I can go the quinacridone there. Um, having a look, there's highlights on that edge, I'll leave that. Come around there. So just getting it so it shows the curliness of the leaves because the, le the petals are all sort of shriveled up and pretty and weird and strange and lots of fun things going on. There's lots of abstract shapes in this piece. Lots of abstract shapes and I am not an abstract artist so this is all learning. <laughs> this is all learning. Okay. Get that very dark down there. Can blend that out a little bit so I wet my brush drag that down okay let's have a look it's darker in here so darken that it's a little bit okay I'm happy with that I need to leave that it's very dark up here because that petals per curled at the top or is that a leaf maybe that's a leaf okay I could come up to the edge of that petal right I think I'm gonna leave that I've got to do the stamen in the middle I'm going to go to the bottom and I'm going to strengthen up these petals. So very dark there. Very dark there. Um, super duper dark there. So I'm just looking at the photograph. And this is a flower out of my garden. I actually have it sitting in a pot next to me <laughs> as well. I'll come around here. Get that in like that. Can darken up that's a petal in there so I'm going to cut around that my beautiful husband just bought me a cup of coffee thank you babe oh any oh it just swap it for that one that'd be awesome thank you thank you all right so I come down and around there and that pretty much I think I can do some darker veiny bits that's a stamen thing in there. So I can darken up the vein lines. You can see that's dried back quite pale. Okay, I'll let that dry a little bit. Let that dry a little bit. And I'm going to pop these beautiful stamen in. They're bright yellow. So go to my bright yellow. I can go up onto this top one and pop that in like that. Just blob in that yellow like that. It looks green on the camera but it's actually a beautiful bright yellow. Okay and then also same down here. I've got to pop that yellow in here. <coughs> Just down in there. That same colour. There we go. that okay and then I'm going to go a bit of orange at the base oops I need to get my brush a bit wetter while that's still wet drop a bit of orange in at the bottom like that it's actually got little white fluffy bits on the top that I didn't see before which is really interesting. Okay. There we go. And um, now let's have a quick look at what else I've got here. Because I do have, where's my Daniel Smith's colours? I'm going to grab my Daniel Smith's for a second. Because I think they've got a lilac-y colour that I've got somewhere in here. Um, let's have a look. No, that's all me blues. I separated them into different colour trays. So I've got one of blues and one of purples and pinks and one of <coughs> yellows and oranges. There we go. What have I got here? Cas uh, no, what is that? Wisteria. Wisteria is probably a good colour. Let's try that. Okay, so it's a this is a Daniel Smith colour I'm trying now. I'm just going to pop that on. It's more of an opaque kind of a colour. I just want to... Like the same as the... the um, 
cobalt violet, it just seems to be a bit more opaque. So I just want to use that just to strengthen some of these areas. And I've got that just here. I'm holding that palette in my hand. Cut around that petal because it's very similar, just slightly more dense. Okay, I like that better. That's given that little bit more strength. That has given that a little bit more strength. Just darkened up those shadows where I need them. I take it down to there on that one, a bit more that way on that one, a bit there on that one. You can't go too overboard because otherwise I'll overdo it and it'll look too heavy. So I've got to know when to stop is the hard part. It's always the hard part. Okay, so I'm going to take that down and around here. I'll soften up that edge a little bit. Let's have a look at that one. Come down and around there. That's I can darken up a little bit of that. This one can almost all be strengthened. Top of that one's fine. That one's fine. That one's fine. Okay. I reckon. I'm just about going to call that done for a fun watercolour flower sketch. Like I said, if anyone in chat knows what this is, you can let me know. That'd be awesome. I'm just going to sign it. Whoops. If I, if I can sign it, if I can get my brush to hold water, or the ink, paint, whatever it is, I'll sign it down the bottom here. 22. And there we have it, tapes. I've actually, I need to pop a few more veins into that. Pop a few veins into that there. So it doesn't look so flat looking. There we go. Just suggest some veins in there and we are done. So thank you for watching everyone. I hope you enjoy this. I hope you have fun trying to do this yourselves. It is lots of fun. Pick a garden, pick a flower from your garden and see how you go. Anyway, thank you so much. Have an awesome